All right, so this is uh, to help you get ready for this uh, conic sections test. Uh, we're, we're only covering three sections in Chapter 11. So um, our conic sections discussion in Chapter 11 started with the parabola. So for number one, uh, notice on these problems, the only ones that have a star are the ones that need to be graphed, and that's going to be the same way on your test. So for number one, we just have to come up with the equation for this particular parabola. So uh, the vertex is at the origin, and the focus is at the point 3, 0. So this is describing a parabola that opens to the right. Okay, remember the focus is always inside the mouth of the parabola. And the equation, in general, for a parabola that has a vertex at the origin that opens to the right is this, x equals ay squared. So if it opens left or right, it's solved for x. If it opens up or down, it's solved for y. A will tell you whether A being positive, it's right or up. Negative means left or down. So all we have to do is come up with the number, this coefficient called A. And uh, remember, with parabolas, you use this formula quite a bit. The absolute value of A is 1 over 4C. C is the distance from the vertex to the focus, and in this particular case, that's three units. So A is going to be 1 12th. So to finish off my answer, the equation is going to be x equals 1 12th y squared. So now on the test, this vertex uh, is going to be at the origin, but this focus could be any of the other three axes. So just be prepared for all four. This is just one sample. All right, uh, for number two, obviously we have to graph. So uh, let's just go ahead and plot uh, what we know. We have a vertex at 2, negative 3. And we have a focus at... 2, negative 5. Okay, so um, again, this is a parabola. So if the vertex is here at 2, negative 3, uh, and this is the focus, then we've got the parabola that opens down. All right. And uh, I want you to put this in vertex form. So in general, now it's just, this is not done yet, but in general, it's going to look like this. A is going to be negative. We know based on the vertex that this is going to be x minus 2 quantity squared minus 3. So again, using this same formula, we're going to come up with the number that plugs in for a, this coefficient. So how far is it from vertex to focus? Two units. So using our formula, what's a? One eighth, okay. So the negative stays because that represents the parabola that opens down. We just need to change a. All right, so there's the equation. And then we talked how uh, you can make a, two easy points. Just if you'll just take this denominator 8 and divide it into 2, divide it by 2, that makes 4. And from the focus, you can go both left and right 4 and get more points. And that's all I'm going to require, just the vertex and then one point on either side of your symmetry line. I am going to ask you to uh, plot the directrix, however. So <clears throat> what is the <clears throat> equation for the directrix? Okay, so since we went two units down to get to the focus, we'll go two units up, and that will be a line. And... Uh, Joseph said correctly, that's the equation y equals negative 1. That's the directrix. 
and we're done with number two. Any questions so far? All right, now we're shifting to ellipses. So again, number three is no graph. Number four will be equation plus graph. So let's come up with the equation for an ellipse that has a center at the origin, a focus at three zero, and a vertex at negative four zero. So what this tells me is the x-axis is gonna be major. Okay, remember with ellipses, we have a major axis and a minor axis. But the numerators never change. Since the center is at the origin, I can just go ahead and do this much. Remember for ellipses, uh, the standard form equation is plus. Hyperbolus will be minus. So for ellipses, a squared and b squared switch. They change depending on the problem. And we need to show a squared, the bigger of the two, going underneath x squared because vertices and foci always go on the major axis. Okay, so um, A represents the distance from the center, we're told that that's the origin, to a vertex. So how many units is it from the center to a vertex? Looks like four, so that means A squared is going to be 16. Based on what we're given so far, we don't, yet, we don't know yet uh, what b squared is, but we can find it. For ellipses, we use this little formula. c squared is a squared minus b squared. c is still, just like with parabolas, c is the distance from the center to a focal point, so c is going to be 3. So c squared will be 9. So it looks like b squared is going to be 7. So we can put 7 here for this second denominator, the denominator underneath y squared. And it uh, looks like we're done. Since all we had to do is come up with the equation. So once again, just fair warning, uh, I may, uh, the center will be at the origin just like this one, but these could be on the y axis. So just be prepared for either case, the tall ellipse or the wide ellipse. Any questions so far? Is it pretty straightforward? Okay, so number four, we're gonna graph. Uh, so let's just go ahead and plot what we have. Uh, the center is at two, negative three. We have a focal point at 3, negative 3. And we have a vertex at 5, negative 3. Okay, well, the center here, uh, if I have a vertex 1, 2, 3 units to the right, that means I also have to have one 3 units to the left because the center obviously should be right in between. And if this is a focal point, then so is this. Okay, so uh, we're about ready to sketch the graph. We know what the end points are horizontally, what the vertices are, but we don't know what the co-vertices are. So we're going to go back to our formula. C squared is A squared minus b squared. So c is going to be 1. It's 1 unit from the center to a focal point. c squared is, c is 1, so c squared is 1. Uh, a is two, uh, 3, sorry, 1, 2, 3. a is 3, so a squared is 9. So it looks like b squared is going to be 8. All right, so uh, to finish our graph, we need the square root of eight. Do anybody get that? It's almost three. It's like 2.8 plus minus. So I'm going to go from the center up almost three. One, two, three, just a little bit shy of three up and 
down and then connect my vertices and co-vertices Here's probably looks a lot better than that. Um, uh, let's go ahead and finish this equation off. So, um, so the graph of this ellipse is provided, and now we just have to come up with the equation. And so, for ellipses, we can um, put uh, our x squared numerator here. So uh, the center is two negative three. So that's going to make x minus two quantity squared and then the y coordinate with y so that would be y plus 3 quantity squared equals 1 and um, since our um, ellipse is wide that means the horizontal axis is the major axis and just think about the x-axis so x should have the bigger denominator that's going to be a squared which is 9 y since the minor axis is vertical and the y-axis is vertical uh, y will get the smaller of the two numbers b squared which is eight so there's the equation to go along with the graph all right our next problems uh, involve hyperbolas <clears throat> so number five we just have to come up with the equation the center is at the origin we have a focus at 3, 0 and a vertex at negative 2, 0. So that tells me that, um, again, with hyperbolas, it's all about which axis are we actually crossing. And we're going to be crossing the x-axis according to where our vertex and focus are located. So uh, we're going to lead with x squared. And hyperbola equations are minus. So we're crossing x, we lead with x squared. And now we have to come up with a squared. a squared will be placed here, and b squared will be here. So a is the distance from the center to a vertex, and so a is 2. So that means a squared is 4. b will be the distance from the center to the other part of our rectangle. Remember we draw a rectangle, we draw the asymptote lines. So to find B, if we're not looking at the graph, we just use the Pythagorean theorem. Three, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So C is 3. It's 3 units from the center to a focus. So 3 squared is 9. We've already said that A squared is 4. And so b squared is going to be 5. And so that's your equation for the hyperbola being described in number 5. Number 6 is going to involve some graphing. So let's plot the center. 1, negative 2. We have a focus at 4, negative 2. And we have a vertex at 3, negative 2. OK, so that means uh, if we have a focus 3 units to the right, there's a matching one that's 3 units to the left. If we have a vertex 1 or 2 units to the right, then there's another one 2 units to the left. And so um, let's go ahead and define uh, what A is. A is the distance from the center to a vertex, so A is 2. Uh, C is the distance from the center to a focus, so C is 3. And now we can find out what B is. So for hyperbolas, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So once again, uh, B squared is going to be 5. So b is the square root of 5. So it's just, that's about 2.2. So we're going to go up just a little bit more than 2 from the center and then down just a little bit more than 2. And we make our 
central rectangle going through our A numbers and our B numbers. And then it's through those corners that we do the asymptote lines. And just make an X. And now we're going to draw the graph through these uh, vertices on the end. The right part looks like that. And the left part looks like that. So be careful. Some people make the mistake and they draw the hyperbolas uh, through the focal points and make sure you draw them through the vertices. All right, still got to come up with the equation. So um, our transverse axis is horizontal. Just think about the x-axis is horizontal. So we're going to lead with x in this equation. So x minus 1 quantity squared minus y plus 2 quantity squared. And a squared will be our first denominator. And b squared will be the second. And there's the equation to go along with this graph. All right, we're ready for number seven. And uh, this one we don't have to graph. Uh, we just have to come up with the information that's being asked for. So uh, this is a parabola. And uh, we want to find the vertex focus and the directrix. So the first thing that needs to happen is we need to solve it for the lower degree variable. And the lower degree variable is x. Uh, just think about this would be y squared if we expanded. So we're going to solve this for x. So I'm going to multiply by 1 eighth first. And then I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And now it's solved for x. And when it's solved for x, that means the parabola has to open either to the right or to the left. And A will tell you what that is. Uh, a being positive means that this is going to open to the right. So the vertex, first of all, uh, remember this is a little tricky, so be careful. It's solved for x. So this number is actually going to be the opposite of this number is going to be the y coordinate. So for the vertex, it's going to be 2, negative 3. So when it's solved for x, it's kind of the reverse of what we're used to seeing in vertex form. So be careful about that. Okay, uh, let's find out how far it is to get to the focus. So remember this little formula. Absolute value of A, and A is 1 eighth, equals 1 over 4C. So you could just cross multiply 4C equals 8. So this tells us it's two units away from the vertex to the focus. And we're going to travel these two units in the direction that the parabola opens. And we already said that it should open to the right. So from the vertex, we need to travel two spaces, two units to the right. And that will land us on the focus. So just basically, since you're traveling right, you can just add two to this x-coordinate, and that means the focus is at 4, negative 3. All right, the directrix is a line, and in this case, it's got to be a vertical line. You can always remember it this way. If your equation for the parabola says x equals, then your directrix equation should also say x equals. And since we went two units to the right to get to the focus, we're going to go two units to the left of the vertex to get to the directrix. And that will put us on the line x equals zero. It's actually the y-axis. And uh, I think we got everything we needed. So there's number seven. And uh, number eight, uh, before we can identify all of this information, we need to get it in standard form. So I'm going to divide by 18 
all the way across. So that's x minus 3 quantity squared over 2 plus y plus 2 quantity squared over 18 equals 1. The center is going to be the point 3, negative 2. All right, vertices. So for vertices, we need to know what A is. And uh, A squared, remember for ellipses, A squared is the bigger denominator. So A squared is 18. So A is going to be the square root of 18. All right. So the square root of 18, uh, just think of it's um, the square root of 16 is 4. So it's just a little bit more than 4. We'll just call it 4.2 plus minus. All right, so let's see if we can tell uh, if this is a tall ellipse or a wide ellipse. Apparently, it's going to be tall. Um, the y-axis or the y variable has a squared, so it's got a vertical major axis. So to get to the vertices, we're going to go to the center, and we're going to go up and down 4.2. So you could think of adding 4.2 to the y that would take you up, and subtracting 4.2 from the y would take you down. All right. So let's just, uh, if you have to, you can grab your calculator. So negative 2 plus 4.2, 2.2. So one vertex is going to be 3, 2.2. And then the other one, if you go to negative 2 and go down 4.2, that puts you at negative 6.2. So those are the vertices. And we're also supposed to label the covertices. Covertices uh, will be the B number. And so B squared is 2. So B is the square root of 2. And the decimal form of that is about 1.7, 1.4 plus minus. So for covertices, uh, we're going to travel left and right. Uh, since the major axis is vertical, the minor axis is going to be horizontal, and the minor axis is where the covertices are found. So if you go back to the center and you add 3.4, so here are my covertices. If you add, I'm sorry, 1.4 to 3, you get 4.4, negative 2. And then if you subtract, that's going to the left. If you're at 3 and you subtract 1.4, that should be 1.6 and negative 2. All right, and so let's see if we got everything. Oh, we got to find the focal points. All right, so try to squeeze that in here. So for the foci, for ellipses, we use c squared is a squared minus b squared. So c squared is going to be 16, 18 minus 2. So c is plus minus 4. And the focal points are always on the major axis. And so we're going to start, everything goes back to the center. The major axis is vertical. So I'm going to add 4, and I'm going to subtract 4, and that'll put me at the two focal points. All right, so for the vertices, I was at 3, 2.2, and 3, negative 6.2. So for the foci, I should be just inside those points. Let's see. So if I add 4, I'm going to be at positive 2. So one focal point is going to be 3, 2, and that is just inside 2.2. And then the other focal point, just go back and subtract 4, and you're at negative 6. So 3, negative 6. So there's a focal point, and then here's the other focal point. So vertices, center, 
covertices and focal points here. There's number eight. All right, uh, number nine, um, identify the center, transverse axis, vertices, and the foci for this particular parabola. So the center, uh, again, just make sure you do x with x, y with y. Uh, the center is going to be 2, negative 2. All right, the transverse axis, we don't have to, uh, we, we're, we are going to tell the length, and we also have to identify whether it's horizontal or vertical. So uh, just think of it this way um, we're going to be crossing, we would be crossing the y axis only. So this is uh, two parabolas that open up and down. And the transverse axis would be that line that connects the two vertices. Okay, so here's the center, and the distance from the center to a vertex is called A. All right, so A, this is A squared, the denominator labeled 16. That's A squared, so A is 4. Okay, A equals 4. So the distance of the, the length of the transverse axis is going to be 8. So it's 4 on either side of the center. So the transverse axis length 8 and it's vertical. All right. Um, okay, so we also have to tell where the vertices are. So we've already identified that A is the distance to the vertices from the center, and we need to travel up and down according to the way the equation is written. So basically, just start at the center, and if you want to travel up, you add 4 to the Y, and if you want to go down, you subtract 4 from the Y. So the vertices are going to be 2, 2 will be the upper one, adding 4. And then 2, negative 6 would be the lower one. All right, uh, foci. So for, for foci, remember for hyperbolas, you're switching back to the Pythagorean theorem. And you want to know what C is. So A squared is 16. B squared is 4, C squared is 20, C is about 4.5, roughly. And focal points are also uh, on this, the same transverse axis. It's The transverse axis is vertical, so we'll go up and down also to uh, get to the focal points. So it's just it's like this. For the focal points, we're going to add 4.5 and, and subtract four and a half from the y. All right, so my focal points would be 2, 2.5, just a half a space beyond the vertices, and then 2, negative 6.5. Okay, and I think that's all we were asked to do on that one. There's my vertices, transverse axis information, center, and that looks good. Okay, a reflector is used by TV crews at football games to pick up the referee's announcements, signals, quarterback signals, on, and so forth. So trying to get live action sound during a football game. A microphone is placed, uh, should be placed at the focus of the parabola. If a certain reflector is four feet wide and one and a half feet deep, where should the microphone be placed? So basically this is describing, you can see the word parabola, parabolic. So when you see a word problem like this, you can just make yourself a little picture, uh, just do a parabola that opens up. So that's gonna be the, it's kind of like a satellite dish shape. It's, it's a parabolic reflector. And the focus is uh, right in here inside the dish. 
So what do we know? The reflector is four feet wide total. So here's the center. That means that it's going to go two feet on either side. So if I'm using an actual x-axis, I'm going to have two and negative two. <clears throat> All right. And it's one and a half feet deep, which means this way, this would be 1.5 on the y-axis. So in other words, this point right here is the ordered pair to 1.5. And this would be, of course, negative to 1.5. Okay, so uh, the bottom line of this question is uh, how far from the base of this dish should the receiver be placed? All right, a reflector, where should the microphone, in other words, be placed. Where are we going to put this? So really what this is for a parabola is uh, what is C? How far is it from the, the vertex of the parabola to the focus? All right, so we got to come up with the equation first because um, we typically use this formula to find missing parts. I'm trying to find C in this problem, but I need what? I need A before I can find C to use this formula. So let's take the ordered pair that we were given or we came up with and let's plug in. So here's the equation for the parabola that has a vertex at the origin and opens up. And so let's just take these two numbers for X and Y and plug them in. So Y is 1.5, A is two. So let's solve for A. So 1.5 divided by 4. Is 0.375. So A is 0.375. Now we can use this little formula to come up with C. And if you have to, you can think of it as being over 1. So 4. 4c times 0.375 equals 1. So 4 times 0.375 is 1.5. 1.5c equals 1. So this is another way of saying, if you think about it, this is 3 halves, c equals 1. So c is going to be 2 thirds. Okay, so it's two-thirds of a unit from the base of this reflector to the microphone. And the unit we're dealing with is feet. Okay, so just, it's, just think of two-thirds of a foot, okay, which uh, should be eight inches. So I'm okay with you saying either way if you want to say two-thirds foot or eight inches. Um, probably eight inches uh, sounds a little bit better, but that's the answer. So the microphone should be placed eight inches from the base. All right, I think we just have one more. Uh, we got this whispering gallery problem. So this is usually the type of problem you see for ellipses. Um, let's see, Jim is at one focus. And so let's just, let's just draw our x-axis and here are the walls of the whispering gallery. So Jim is at a focus, which is six feet from the nearest wall. Okay, so I'll say this is six feet from that wall. Okay, there's the center. His friend is standing at the other focus, which is 100 feet away. Okay. Well, the other focus has to be the same distance from this wall. It's also got to be six feet. So really all they're telling you is that it's 100 feet in between. Okay, so this total distance is 100 feet. All right, and so basically, if this is the center, 
then it's 56 feet. Let's see, 50. Uh, it would be 50 feet to here and then another 6 feet. So bottom line is we're talking about a total of 112 feet. If it's 6 feet from here and 6 feet from here, plus 100 in between. So it's 112 divided by 2, which is 56. Okay. So uh, what is the length of the Whispering Gallery, and how high is it at its elliptical? How high is the elliptical ceiling? So it's kind of a high, half ellipse, and we want to know what this height is. Well, we've already come up with the length. What is the length? Uh, the length is going to be 112 feet. And then how high is it at the center? Um, well, that's another way of saying what is B. So we know what A is. A is the distance from the center to a vertex. And that would be 56. We know what C is because C is the distance from the center to a focus. And that's 50. Well, we can use this for ellipses to find any of the, the third missing piece that we're looking for. So um, let's see if we can find b squared. So c squared equals a squared minus b squared. All right, so if you do 50 squared minus, it's going to be plus, so 56 squared minus 50 squared, that's 636. And now we need the square root of that. And uh, that's 25.21, or we'll say 25.22 rounded. So B is approximately 25.22 feet. So that's going to be the height at its center, just a little bit over 25 feet. And that's your answer for number 11. Okay, well, that concludes this review sheet. Your test uh, looks a lot like this. So uh, I think if you feel good about uh, how these problems work, then you should be well prepared for your test, uh, but if you do have any questions while you're working on this, uh, contact me and I'll be glad to help you.